Okay, we're in section 12. This is going to be um, defining derivatives uh, that are um, going to be, a, it's going to be a lot simpler because it's going to be rule-based and we'll, we'll develop those rules. So if you remember in the past, we had these, um, the definition of the derivative as a function. And the problem with that is that it's tough. I mean, for example, if you did this problem over here, it really would take tremendous effort to get through that. I mean, tremendous. Could it be done? Yes, but we want to, start to say that if we're gonna use these definitions, we should probably do it on simple problems and then develop rules for more complicated ones, including this one over here, f of x. We'll talk about what the rules are and we'll write them down. So we'll, we'll talk about the rule for a constant. We'll talk about a power rule. We'll talk about other simple rules as well, all right? As we go through it though, I wanna point out, we are gonna introduce rules today that we're not gonna to use today. For example, we're gonna introduce the product rule and we're introduced to quotient rule, all right? We'll talk about exponential functions. We'll talk about the derivative of exponential functions, stuff that you've done in Math 119. We'll talk about the generalized power rule, and then we'll go to examples, right? This might be tedious for you though. The reason for that is that we're just introducing material so we can actually do examples. So I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard now and talk through the notes at the whiteboard. All right, the whiteboard. So again, I want to point out, we, in the past, we've discussed this over here. And this is something that you should know. So like, for example, in examples, they say, find the derivative by using the definition. This is what you'd be doing. So if they say by definition, whoops, sorry about that. If they say by definition, you would absolutely have to do this or some equivalent definition to do it. <coughs> You'll see me do this definition a lot though, because I think it's the easiest one to do. All right, notation. Let's go over to notation again. The derivative of the function f, we write down f prime. This would also be written in what's called Leibniz notation. What are we doing? Taking a derivative of f with respect to x. But again, it's still that definition thing, right? Or some equivalent definition. And we've given you two already. All right, here's the problem though. If you were asked to do this problem over here, if you were asked to do this, if you were asked to find f prime of x by definition, that would be extremely difficult. So what I'm going to claim is we need to start developing rules that prevent us from the difficulties of using the definition. All right. So let's take a look at the first one and where they say a rule for a constant. It should be easy to do. And once I got that, I, I think I could probably just say any constant I'm given can take its derivative. So I'm going to say in general, f of x is equal to some constant k. Any real number. k can be any real number. Let me write this on the side. k can be any real number. What do I want to do? Well, I want to write its derivative down. So what's its derivative going to be? Let's write this down. Well, by definition, it's limit as h goes to zero. I'm doing the definition, by the way. x plus h minus f of x over h. Let's keep going. Limit h goes to zero. Whoops. h. What's f of x? k. Well, here's the deal. What's f of x plus h? It's still k doesn't change. What's k minus k is zero. What's zero divided by h? Well, provided h is not zero, not limit says that, it's zero. So what do I get? Zero. This is good news. So now I got a rule. What's my rule? If f of x equals to k, I automatically know f prime of x is equal to zero. And I could use that over and over again. All right, let's do the next one. Oh, by the way, they write this down over here as well for you. Make sure you look at that. Let's do the next one, power rule. And as I do this over here, I, I want to point out what we're doing over here. We're trying to get a power rule. I'll put this over here. F of X equals X to the N. We're trying to develop a rule for that. Now, someone's going to say, well, I could do one. I could do two. I could do three. Now, what I mean by that is N is going to be some positive integer. All right, so n could be one, 
A could be two, A could be three. But I got a generalized statement over here, but I wanna point out what I really need in my, my definition. I need F of X plus H. I definitely need that. Was that gonna be X plus H to the nth power? All right, now where'd you learn about this? This is the binomial. And you learn about a binomial in Math 120. You learned how to expand it. And let's put that down for you. What would you get? You get X to the N plus, no, the next one's gonna be tough, right? So I'm gonna write this down <coughs> with those binomial coefficients. So I gotta do that for you. Let me get my little eraser out. N, 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 N minus one, X to the N minus one times H to the first power plus, I keep writing this down. And also it's works. We've done this in math 120. N, N minus two, X, N minus two, H squared plus yada, yada, yada. That, what does that mean? You know the pattern. Where do we end off with? N, zero. And then I'd have no X's. I'm going to say X to the zero. And then it would be H to the N. All right, that's not so bad. So let, let's put this down for you, you know, kind of more compact form. So I'm going to say NN is just one. It's X to the N. Plus, well, this is going to be n x to the n minus one h. That's the second term. Third term's a little more complicated, by the way. But what I'm going to claim is the coefficients really don't bother me so much. It's these things that are killing me. All right. So I'm going to say, you know, some constant there. That's going to be n n minus two, and then it's going to be x n minus two h squared plus yada, 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 until we get to the end of that, which is gonna be H to the N. All right, so we did that. And now the question is, you know, I, I got problems here and I wanna claim that my next problem is gonna be, I gotta do F of X plus H minus F of X. All right, let's see if we can do that. So this is f of x, and this is f of x plus h. Well, that looks like it's going to be pretty easy because what happens is this term would disappear. And what are you left off with? You'd be left off with n, x, n minus 1 h plus n, n minus 2, x, n minus 2 h squared plus yada, 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 plus h to the n. All right, then what do we do? Well, I gotta do the limit business and this could get really tough now. So I gotta write this limit business down. F prime of x is equal to the limit, h goes to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Well, I'm gonna write that down for you. Well, I know the top, it's right here. Then the question is, I have to divide through by H, right? What would I get if I divide by, and by every term is divided by H. Every term is divided by H. Let's write that down, what you get. You would get N, X, N minus one. Well, the first H disappears plus, n, n minus two, x to the n minus two. Well, h squared divided by h is gonna be h. What's the next one gonna be? Well, if I write it down, it would be n, n minus three, x, n minus three times h squared, plus yada, 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 all the way down to h, n divided by h, which would be h, n minus one. Question is, can we do that limit? And I think we can, I'll tell you why. We can use the limit law. What do I know? This goes to zero, this goes to zero. Why is that? 
Age is a factor of every single turn. So what are you left off with? Something really, really simple. We left off with N. Whoops, sorry about that. You're left off with N. I got to go back to black ink, sorry. You're left off with N times X to the N minus one. This is a nice rule to have, by the way. Let me write down the rule. If F of X equals X to the N, and N is a positive integer, I know the derivative of this thing is really simple. That's really, really simple. Let's go back over that. And that's written down for you here. Now, granted, we're talking through what's written down. I'm hoping you're able to follow that. That does require study, though. You need to study. For some students, that means relearning what was taught at Math 120, that's kind of college, which is the binomial theorem. That's just written over there. All right, there's other simple rules I want to point out. Not that I want to derive every one over here, but over here, uh, if someone said, you know, what's the derivative of a sum? Let's put this over here. Whoops. I don't want to write everyone down, by the way, but we'll talk about them. They're really relatively simple. What's your derivative of ddx? What do you do? You write down the definition. What's it going to be? The limit as h goes to zero. Well, let's write this down. It's pretty simple to do. And it's, all the rules, really, that's all you're doing is writing the definition down. What's that going to be? Oh, boy, it's f of x plus h plus g of x plus h over h. I'll put this over here. Minus f of x. I'm sorry, not minus, plus f of x. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It is minus. What am I saying? I'm so dizzy. I can't really remember what I'm saying. Just putting the definition down. That's all I'm doing. Minus f of x. Oh, I, I'm really screwing up. Minus g of x. Let's write the definition down. What am I doing? I'm taking this, putting the difference quotient down. You know, evaluated x plus h and then subtract away, you know, the lower thing. Got this. I could rearrange this guy. Limit h goes to zero. And what I could do, f of x plus h minus f of x over h minus, not minus, I'm sorry, plus g of x plus h minus g of x over h. And then I could use limit laws to put into two different problems. What I'm seeing, I'm seeing this is just f prime of x plus g prime of x. All right, let's go back over here. What do we just do? We just did this. So the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. This one follows. The derivative of the difference is the difference of their derivatives. What about constants? Well, these are limit problems. Constants pull out. So the derivative of a constant multiple of f would equal the constant times the derivative of f. All right, this is tough. We're not gonna use this today, but I wanna derive it, but we're not gonna use it. I'm gonna derive it. So let's write this over here. It's gonna be some work. The derivative of a product We're going to derive it now. And what's that going to be? It's going to be equal to the limit. H goes to zero. F of X plus H times G of X plus H. I'm just using the definition. Minus F of X times G of X over H. Now, someone says, I have no idea what to do. And I understand that. Like, if I didn't know what to do, I think I would have a tough time thinking through that. All right, here's the deal, though. People that come up with rules, they don't come up with them immediately. What they do is they practice problems. Then they see patterns, and they realize that the pattern doesn't come up. So let me tell you what people, again, do. They practice product problems. And what they noticed, it turned out to be f of x. They kept seeing it over and over again g prime of x minus f prime of x times g of x. They practice. What does that mean? Hard work. Hard work pays off in seeing a pattern, right? You get better at things. 
So let's see if we can see that, what they saw by their hard work. So I'm gonna write this over again, limit, H goes to zero. It's gonna to be tough. I'm not gonna to to be easy for you. Well, I'm gonna do something you might think is rather strange. I'm gonna give and take at the same time. And what I'm gonna give over here or take, I'm gonna take F of X plus H G of X. I'm actually going to take it. If I take it, I got to give it. That's crazy looking though, right? Minus, well, let's see, I got the first one, the two middle terms disappear, by the way, f of x, g of x. Let's keep going. It looks crazy though, doesn't it? Let's keep going. Limit. H goes to zero. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing over here. I'm focusing in on this business here. And I'm also going to focus on this thing over here. And I'm going to split into two different problems. Let me write that down for you. The first one, what do I notice about that? I'm looking at it and I notice that F of X plus H would factor out from that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to my eraser app. I'm going to factor out the f of x plus h first. And you get h. And what would you get over there? You'd get g of x plus h minus g of x. Now, on the second one, I'm looking at the second guy. There's still a common number of h, by the way. But what am I going to factor out from those two? Probably just g of x. And what would you be left off with? I'll move over a little bit. I still got a denominator of H and that's going to be F of X plus H minus F of X. Well, what I notice is I got, I got limit loss now. I got them all over the place. I got products. I got sums. So let's take a look. Well, the first guy just looking at is H goes to zero would be F of X. Let me point that out to you. If H goes to zero, this just becomes F of X. Well, as h goes to zero, this is the defining feature of g prime plus g of x. Let me point this out over here. As h goes to zero, this is just f prime. We just developed the product rule. Let's go back over that. I'm going to tell you where that's written down for you. Product rule is written right over here for you. Now, someone says, oh, it's written a little bit differently than the other one. It's nice about this, it's commutative. So this could be written in a variety of ways, but the bottom line is, you know, first function times the second function plus the second function times the first function. This is going to need to be memorized. I'm gonna say the way to memorize these things is by use. But through this section here, we're not using the product rule. We're just introducing it. It would be the next section that we, that we actually use it. All right, so I'm gonna say product rule is done. Let's go to the next page. And I want to do quotient rule for you. And quotient rule, again, I want to tell you how people get these things. Hard work. Hard, hard work. What's the hard work? They do a tremendous number of problems. And after they do a tremendous number of problems, they say, I see a pattern. Well, I'm going to write down the pattern they saw, uh, pretending I did a lot of work. I have done a lot of work, by the way. But they want to do the derivative of a quotient. I'm going to put the quotient out as f of x over g of x. Well, they did a tremendous number of problems, and they start to notice of all the problems they've done, they get something that looks like this every single time. Then they say, so how could I show it in general? How could I show this in general? And that becomes a problem for them. So g prime of x times f of x. All right, let's go through it. And I'm going to write it over in the side for you. D dx, f of x over g of x. And yeah, it's going to be painful for a lot of students. But let's write this down. Limit, h goes to zero. Well, it can be tough, right? h, f of x plus h 
over G of X plus H minus F of X over G of X. Well, you know what I got to do? It's really kind of crazy looking. I need to simplify that. Limit H goes to zero. Bear with me. I'm going to do what I did in math 119 or 100 or 092. Multiply both sides by the minor LCD. And I'm, I'm better than if, you know, sort of as a very low level algebra class, but that's going to be G of X plus H times G of X. And what do you get top? F of X plus H times G of X minus F of X times G of X plus H. Well, you know what? I'm still not seeing it. So what I got to do is, well, what I did before, I kind of gave and took, right? And I'll do that again for you. Now, I realize that some students are saying, I don't want to do this. I just want to know what it is. I don't care how it's gotten. Just tell me what it is. And we'll get there. All right. So I'm going to write this down. So F of X plus H times G of X. I'm going to take and then I'm going to give. And what I'm going to take, I'll take, let's see what I'll take. F of X, G of X. Well, if I take that, I got to give it. Minus, now plus F of X, G of X. Let's keep moving. Minus F of X, G of X plus H. Much of mathematics is knowing a definition and using it until you see something. Limit. H goes to zero. By the way, I want to circle what I'm doing over here. I'm looking at this. And by the way, I know the bottom's at in each case. And let's write this down. I'm looking at that. What factors out from that? G of X, right? Whoops. I did it again. What's the denominator there? H, G of X plus H, G of X. I know it looks awful. We'll keep going now. Let me do the next one. And the next one I'm looking at, I want to circle what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this over here. And what I'm going to factor out, it might seem strange to you. I'm actually going to factor out minus F of X. Whoops. Someone says, why do you do that? I want to make it look familiar. What would I get? I would get G of X plus H minus G of X over, well, I'm going to write this down now, H, G of X plus H, G of X. All right. All right. Here comes a tough part. I, I got to keep writing. And I mean, what I mean by tough is for a lot of students, just writing things down becomes you know, overwhelming. And I got to write down, I'm seeing G of X. I'm seeing G of X plus H. I'm seeing G of X times F of X plus H minus F of X over H. There's a point to this minus, well, yeah, this is G of X here. Let's see F of X. G of X plus H, G of X times G of X plus H minus G of X over H. Let's look and see if you did a limit. It's limit loss now. So I'm going to circle these things and I want to do each limit separately if I can. Each limit separately if I can. What do you get? 
Well, the first guy is going to turn out to be G of X. That's not a prop because, you know, just G of X. What do you get in bottom? You get G of X times G of X, which is G of X quantity squared. What's this guy's limit over there? Well, as H goes to zero, that's just the defining feature of F prime minus. What's this guy's limit? It's F of X, nothing to do with H. The bottom would be G of X squared. What's the second guy? This guy right there, it's just G prime of X. Let's pull it together. What am I saying? That's a quotient rule. Let's go back over that. I want to point out what that's written for you right over here. We're not using the quotient rule today. We're just deriving it. We'll come back to it later, but the quotient rule is something you're going to need to know. How do you get to know that? By practice, all right? Using the definition, using the rules, you're gonna to start to develop a skill set. All right, let's talk about exponential functions. All right, I know this is gonna be a longer lecture today. Problem with long lecture, a lot of people get confused, but let's just put this down here. And if I got f of x and f of x equals a to the x, if I want to know its derivative, well, I'd write down the definition limit as h goes to zero. Let's write this down. What are you going to get? a to the x plus h minus a to the x over h. I'm going to continue to manipulate until I see something I can recognize or I hit a dead end. I want to know about over here, a to the x factors out. And we're left off with limit, h goes to zero, a to the h minus one over h. All right. Here's the problem though. I gotta be honest with you. I'm looking at this over here and it seems weird that the derivative is related to the original function. You see that? But then they got this guy over here and I'm wondering, what is that guy, right? So I wanna talk about things going back to math 119. And we're here. And I wanna to return to math 119, all right? I wanna to return to math 119. So in 119, what I'm going to talk about is, you know, certainly I'm looking at this guy over here and I guess if I wrote this down over here, let me put down a next step over here. If I wrote down F prime at zero, oh, by the way, in 119, you were told that A was greater than zero, all right? So what I get there, I get one. And I'd be left with this over here, limit as H goes to zero, and again, I'm still, I'm still in a problem. I don't know what it is. A to the H minus one H. All right, let's go back over here. And I'm left with this limit now. Right? So what, what do I basically know? I know like, it's kind of simple, right? So I got that limit still. That limit is still this limit over here. So what do I know? I know that F prime of X is equal A to the X times f prime at zero. That's what I know. I know this now. Here comes my problem. Do I know any limit that looks like that? And in math 119, you were given this limit over here. All right, now you were given a little bit differently, but it's really the same equivalent thing, but it's really the defining feature of what's called Euler's number. Uh, yeah, I, I have to be honest with you. In Math 19, you were given a slightly different limit, but it's really a variety of ways to write that limit down. This is one way to do that. Limit as h goes to zero of e to the h minus one over h equals one. This is a limit you probably should remember. All right. So what do we have now? Let's write this down. If the a is equal to Euler's number. What do we have? Let's write this down. F of X 
would equal e to the x f prime of x would be e to the x times the derivative, right? That limit evaluated at zero, which in this case turned out to be one. So what have we now shown? We have shown that if f of x is equal e to the x, f prime is exactly the same. This is remarkable, by the way, that a function, its derivative is identical to the function itself. All right, so I'm gonna say, you know, important result over there. Let's go to the next thing, generalized power rule. We'll, we'll eventually show this, right? But I, I wanna be honest with you that there's a variety of ways of showing it. The binomial theorem that you were given in math uh, uh, 120 was just for positive integer n. It's, but there's a generalized binomial theorem. We could actually show this by using a generalized binomial theorem. But I, I don't think that you probably know what that is at this point. That's something that we we'll discussed in Calc 2. But we could also do this thing by using logarithms and exponentials. But the bottom line is, I'm going to say, state this without you know, further ado. And what am I saying over there? I'm saying now that if f of x is equal to xr, where well, r now can be any real number. Now, if you remember in the notes, I was saying that r had to be a positive integer. It's really the same rule. Remarkable. Again, this can easily be shown by using exponentials and logs. Let's not worry about that. What do we worry about? We were presented with a large number of rules now. Where do the rules come from? Definitions. What rules do we have? We got some rules to worry about now. Now, here's the deal. Now, you might say, I can't remember a word you said. You need to study all that material before, and then you need to look at examples. And we'll do that next. Of course, after we study and look at examples, you could say, when do I get a chance to try? At all points, do you have a chance to try? But you need to be alone when you're trying, not in class, not when teachers are yammering on. When you go home, you're alone or in a library, wherever, and you need to do the examples. We'll do these examples together, and then there'll be some problems for you to try on your own. Of course, there will also be some web assignment for you as well to try. Thank you.